Good morning. Good morning. Aren't you enthusiastic, those of you who are present with us to be here? Things are changing. We understand that. We're glad all of you are, who are able to join us online are joining us as well. Um, I wanted to share that we are in an interesting phase of being the church as we make decisions about what we're going to do, how we're going to do it, and uh, that sort of thing, as you can well imagine. Uh, we are changing the seating. We're encouraging more people to come. There's more, every other seat, every other pew is open to sit in. And we, of course, if you're in the same pew and you're from a different family group, say separated. We're treating the sanctuary and all our common areas as areas in which somebody could be in contact with somebody who might be at risk or vulnerable. So we're encouraging people to wear masks in the common areas, including here, unless you're coming up to speak or do something. Um, so that's one of the things we're doing. We are starting to have some groups meet. Um, they need to arrange that time and place with our administrative assistant. So we're making some progress. We're, we're excited about some of the changes that are happening. This afternoon, um, right after, really starting at noon, from noon to four at Baser United Methodist Church, uh, Mel and Carrie Kirk's celebration is occurring. It's kind of a certain level of informality. I think there's food starting at noon and some of those things are going to be happening. I'm going to try to I'm going to beat it out there and be out there by about 1.30 to have a little bit of time to share some memories and some thoughts. Uh, it's not a formal memorial service. The family decided to just have a time of celebration and support. It's kind of like a visitation plus, if you will. Uh, but <clears throat> if you're able to do that, that'd be awesome. Also, we got VBS is coming up, and we're coming up on the deadline for signing up for VBS. And I just want to share what you might be able to enjoy. Everybody now. There we go. We've got we got some people. We have we have some people who are already practicing. I know, and we're already working on this. But if you know, you know, have got some grandkids, or you got some other people you know that'd be interested in and do, uh, joining, get online and register. We'd love to have them. I invite you to be in prayer with me on this Pentecost morning. God of grace, thanks for bringing us together. Thanks for setting aside this day in our church worship season to remember the power of your Holy Spirit. Today we pray that that Holy Spirit be amongst us even now. Though we may not actually see tongues of flames that are upon us, we know that the flame of your Spirit is always present. May we feel it today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
I invite you to stand in body and in spirit as we join in the call to worship together this morning. Come, Holy Spirit. 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 May we receive the Holy Spirit in this place. Amen. And let's join together in our opening song. everybody this morning. Did you get the message to wear red today? Well, I was wondering why red is the best color for today and had to go way back to the Old Testament to follow the story. Far back in the Old Testament, a prophet named Joel said that God would pour out his spirit on the people and then they would be able to see visions and they would have wonderful dreams. Many years later, Jesus told his disciples about the Holy Spirit. He said that his Father, that's God, right, would send the Holy Spirit as a helper. And that helper would teach the disciples everything they needed to know and also remind them of everything that Jesus had already taught them. But Jesus didn't tell the disciples when all of this would happen. And that brings us to today. 
This day has been a special day for the Jewish people for more than a thousand years. It's called the Feast of the Harvest or Pentecost. After Jesus' death and after he rose into heaven to be with his Father, God, his disciples and many, many other Jewish people were gathered in Jerusalem to celebrate Pentecost. The disciples were all in one room when something very strange happened. A sound like a very strong wind filled the room. And then tongues of fire rested on the heads of each of the disciples. And finally, they began talking in many different languages. And what was weird about that was they didn't know all those languages. Suddenly, they could speak them. Well, just like Joel and Jesus promised, the Holy Spirit had arrived and it was poured into them. The Holy Spirit made the disciples able to talk to people in all sorts of languages so that they could teach the many people who had come from many different countries all about Jesus. And that's just what they did. Those people became believers just like you and just like me. So that's kind of a long story to explain the color red. Red reminds us of the flame that appeared on the disciples' heads that day. Makes sense. So, what's with all of the birthday decorations and the cupcakes? Well, people who are Christians now think of Pentecost as the birthday of the church. And doesn't that make sense? Today we are saying happy birthday to the church. We have flames on our birthday cake, uh, well, cupcakes, and we use our own wind to blow the candles out. Maybe now when you celebrate your birthday or a friend's birthday, you can also remember the Holy Spirit and the birthday of the church as you see the lit candles and as they are blown out. And maybe next year we could all be together in our own church and have a really good birthday party, a real birthday party to celebrate the church. Let's bow our heads now and pray together. God, thank you for the Holy Spirit and for the birthday of the church. Thank you that the church has a place at the party for all of us and everyone in your world. Fill us and all of your people with your Holy Spirit. We love you, Father God. And all the people said, Amen. I, like you, was waiting to see what was next. <laughs> Did you have that moment? That's a, that's a Holy Spirit moment, in case you're curious. I mean, you have all these bells standing up there, and you're thinking, okay. <laughs> see what fun we can have when we get together. I invite you to just take a moment um, to be in prayer. Let's pray. Holy One, we're not sure what it would be like if the Holy Spirit blew through our churches again as it did on the day of Pentecost. However, we want to speak the language that you have given louder and more clearly in our lives and church. So today we pray, come Holy Spirit, come. Pour out your fire of love upon us to be the body of Christ in a world that is often hurting, hungry, and cynical. We want to bring the good news to the poor, heal the brokenhearted, preach deliverance to captives, bring recovery of sight to the blind, and set at liberty all those that are bruised and oppressed. As your disciples, we pray for all who suffer are poor, despairing, burdened, blind, and battered. In your loving breeze, we pray for health and wholeness for those who are physically ill, 
for those who are ailing mentally, for those who are money sick, for those who are spiritually unwell. We pray for the healing of your creation and the renewal of the face of the land. We pray for those who are thirsty that they would drink from your fountain of living waters and never thirst again. We pray all this as your humble people, as some of the very disciples who received the power of your Holy Spirit so long ago. And we pray those familiar words that Jesus has taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Pedro가 열한 사도와 같이 서서 소리를 높여 가로되 유대인들과 예루살렘에서 아는 모든 사람들아 이 일을 너희로 알게 할 것이니 내 말에 귀를 기울이라 때가 제 삼신이 너희 생각과 같이 이 사람들이 취한 것이 아니라 이는 곧 선지자 요엘로 말씀하신 것이니 일렀으되 하나님이 가라사대 말세에 내가 내 영으로 모든 육체에게 부어주리니 너희의 자녀들은 예언할 것이요 너희의 젊은이들은 환상을 보고 너희의 늙은이들은 꿈을 꾸리라 그때 내가 내 영으로 내 남종과 여종들에게 부어주리니 저희가 예언할 것이요 Matendo ya mtume sura ya pili mustari wa kumi na tisa mpaka makumi mbili na tano. Nami nitaeonyesha maajabu juu mbinguni na ishara mchini duniani. Damu, moto na mawimbi ya moshi. Jua litakuwa giza na mwezi itakuwa mwekundu kama damu. Kabla ya kuja siku ile kuu ya Bwana liliyotukufu. Na kila mtu atakayeliita jina la Bwana ataokolewa. Some of you may be asking yourself, who were those people? <laughs> no? Uh, colleagues. Those are colleagues of mine in the annual conference. And if you're interested, you can go on to the conference website and find um, all of chapter 2 read by the diverse pastors in our conference, reading the entirety of, of Acts chapter 2. We just shared a portion with you because we think it's always fun for us when we, we read this passage of scripture to think about all the different languages and voices that were spoken uh, at that time. So if you have an opportunity to do that, uh, just to kind of review what you may have heard there um, and some things that might have been left out. You know, we have this, it, it starts with when the day of Pentecost had come, which we, we heard read well by Kathy Williams. And talking about that rushing wind and the violent sound, the lines that I think are interesting is when we get down to this passage that says, and how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus in Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs in our own languages. We hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered, they are filled with new wine. And then Peter stood among them and raised his voice and said, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it shall be, God declares, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit. And I think they covered that part. I just found it interesting. They didn't want to pronounce all the names of the nations, but I get that. And usually when I invite one of you to read this scripture, that's the first thing I hear as well. <laughs> Do I have to say that part with all those weird names? Um, I think this is a very powerful passage of scripture for all of us. It's kind of a defining scripture about who we are. Um, 
I was reading the other day, uh, a Lutheran pastor in a small church was sharing this story. I'm sharing her exact words. My church is like every other church's little sister, so we get a lot of hand-me-downs. As a group of us went through these beautiful altar cloths, we came finally to the red set and found one with an image of a descending dove with completely crazy eyes and claws that looked like talons. Yep, is it, is it, it was as though the Holy Spirit were a raptor. Man, someone said, we can't use this one. It makes the Holy Spirit look dangerous. And that was completely sound advice. I read that and I thought, you know, let's look at how we think about Pentecost. It's this transitional day that occurs from the great 50 days of Easter to what the church historically calls ordinary time. We sometimes call it the birthday of the church, as Anne carefully shared and did a wonderful job, which may be an excellent memory tool for us and does perhaps give us a nod to the movement of the Spirit's empowering activity in the ordinary lives of disciples who began to act on Jesus and God's behalf from that point forward. But it's not exactly a quaint little story. It is a dangerous one. It's a dangerous story. A small group of believers isolate themselves, as the text says, all together in one place. And it makes you wonder why. I kind of believe they were perhaps afraid of everything out there, the outsiders, the maybe the rest of the world. In reality, had they actually known what was about to happen, it would, it would have freaked out even the bravest person, I would think. The danger they were in as they all sat together in one place was from a God who was about to crash their party and bring in everyone they were trying to avoid. Think about that. Think about the description of the event that day. Crazy wind and voices and languages and fire and all that. And it's easy to believe that all that crazy stuff happened that Pentecost day in the first century. And it's very easy for us to assume that it has very little resemblance to what we are today in 21st century America. I mean, we don't hear any mentions about organs or accompaniments or bells or committees or vacation Bible school. There, there were no ushers handing the Phrygians and the Cappadocians a, a bulletin. There were no Mesopotamians having a bake sale after the service. The Cretans and the Arabs weren't there to sing in the choir or play bells or join a Sunday school. The only similarity when we look at this story appears when we look at the people themselves. Then we recognize the church and ourselves. The reality is that we, that we still all have fear and isolation in the church. It's called sectarianism. If we were to look at those people who were gathered that day and think about the things that happened, we could give church names to some of them. The whole speaking in tongues thing, you know, we could say, well, that's the Pentecostals. That long list of how many different nationalities showed up, that's that denomination that always brags about their multiculturalism. Then there were those who witnessed this powerful act of God, tried intellectualizing it by asking, well, what does this mean? One Lutheran pastor claimed that, that was the Lutherans. <laughs> Maybe the ones claiming those people are drunk were evangelicals focused on the personal morality of others. So maybe there's nothing new there, really. And those nice folks who somewhat naively, naively exclaim, oh my gosh, there's no way they can be drunk. It's only 9 o'clock in the morning. They're probably Methodist. <laughs> See, nothing's changed much in terms of the people. People are people. There are emotional ones, judgmental ones, naive ones, and obviously, of course, those of us who would prefer labeling and categorizing everyone into one of those camps. But one thing is clear, in this Pentecost moment, we are there. Flawed, smug, confused, embarrassed, and embarrassing. The very ordinary people to whom God sends the Spirit. Maybe that's why it's ordinary time. 
And God hasn't changed either. Just like that first Pentecost, God still crashes our parties, disrupts our plans, and invites in the people we are trying to avoid. In this amazing moment, the power of the Holy Spirit can't be contained. And herein lies the danger of Pentecost. I'm beginning that the symbols of the Holy Spirit... I did have red on my tag, I just want to say. Which we have all kinds of really cool ones. And my preferred. <laughs> you know, they're, they're nice. These are really pretty, you know. My father had a set exactly like this, like this made by the same people. So all these symbols of this Holy Spirit may not actually be the right one. Can you share the picture? See, I'm beginning to think that having pyramids and symbols instead of this, but instead with a crazy taloned raptor descending upon you might be more accurate. Looks a little more dangerous, doesn't it? Because the Spirit can change you. The Spirit can change you. It can make you speak a new language. It can open your eyes and ears and begin to hear and see all people as God's children. It's too easy for us to idealize the Holy Spirit as comforter who brings a sweet story and a chocolate chip cookies and warm milk. <laughs> but the comfort that the Spirit brings is the comfort of the truth. Think about that for a minute. It's the comfort of the truth. And you have, if you have not had any experience of the truth lately, you, and you ever have, then you can testify that it's not exactly cozy. The very real, ordinary people God loves enough to send a crazy bird with bared talons and a predatory beak is coming with a purpose. The job of the dangerous Holy Spirit is to come and snatch out our stony hearts and replace them with the comfort of God's own heart. And that is painful work. In these days, I don't know what to expect of our church right now. You may have similar feelings. This pandemic has forced us to think in a lot of different ways, new ways unanticipated ways and much is yet to be revealed the truth God has for us may be scary and dangerous but let us not forget God has not changed still the same Pentecost God that interrupts our lives trashes our plans and invites in people when we are trying to avoid is still with us As I was preparing for this message, I read this quote from a pastor who said, God is here among us and within us. The point is, are we looking for and listening for the divine in our midst, or are we looking for a God who makes us comfortable and complacent? The Holy Spirit does come as holy comforter, bringing us the comfort of the truth. But it's dangerous. But this is good news. At the very moment we feel the spirit of truth frighten us and crush us and begin to tear that stony heart out of ours, it begins to put us back together into something God wants us to be. The body of Christ. Not just a small body of gathered faithful, but a people moving because of the spirit from a they to a we. An exceptional beginning of spirit-filled movement from God through Jesus to us, real, ordinary people. With renewed hearts and minds, touched by fire. Amen.
Let us pray. God of grace, take the gifts that we offer to you, whether we're doing it online, whether we're putting it in the basket, however we are contributing this work of being your church. Remind us of the power of the Holy Spirit to guide us and lead us and challenge us and perhaps even drag us into a new life built on you. Use the gifts we offer to bring about your work. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Are you the people of God? Yes. Have you got any flames to show that the Holy Spirit's been around? I mean, I'm just curious. Ah, there we go. Do you think the power of the Holy Spirit can be upon you? So what are you afraid of? Go out into the world and serve God. Amen. Amen.